Let us say good morning. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. And we've gathered here today to sing and to share with you from the Word of God. And we trust wherever you may be that it will prove to be a blessing to your heart. Truly the Lord is good. He has been walking with us, guiding us, and we're leaning on Him, that everlasting arm. And may all that we say or do today be uplifting the Lord Jesus Christ. We have some singing, and we look forward to that today. And then, of course, we'll share with you from God's Word. I want to have a word of prayer with you. Heavenly Father, it's a joy to be here this morning. And oh, how that we would ask your blessings upon the service. The singing, may it be uplifting. May it spread a ray of joy and sunshine. And if there are those that are troubled or downhearted, may you minister to them today. And we thank you, Father, for the word. And if there are those that have never trusted you for soul salvation, may this be today. If there are those that are in trouble, help them to turn to you, call upon you. You are indeed a present help in the time of trouble. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, and we all said amen. We're going to ask the ladies to come. They're going to sing for us, and I trust they'll be a blessing to you.
say how much I love the Lord this morning and how grateful I am that he is able to see us all through this strange times that we're in. We never would have imagined um, in January, you know, when we were celebrating the new year that we would, would be here. But he is faithful and true, and he wraps us in his love. And we just want to praise him this morning for all that he does and all that he is to all of us. of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost save knowing Christ. Little John said he is precious while leaning on his bosom so far two or three that are gathered in his name he would be here and he's here in this building and i know he's, he's here at your homes we can just worship him and glorify in his holy name hallelujah i just this was my mother's favorite song and um, it's been uh, a little over a year that she went home and um I'm just thankful that his eye is on the sparrow and he never, never will let go of us. Why should I feel discouraged? shadows come and why does my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend in 
I trust that you've been blessed by the singing. We thank God for the ladies and for the songs in which they have shared with us. If you have your Bible, and I hope you do there in your home, open it up to the book of Joshua. And we're looking at chapter 1. And this is a wonderful, wonderful book. And we are thinking as really the key verse and the whole book is talking about how to be successful in the battles of life. And life is not a bed of roses. There are some ups and downs that we encounter along the way. And, uh, but what is so wonderful, the Lord promised Joshua in this chapter that he would never leave him nor forsake him. And how that he would bless him and truly, he had been preparing Joshua in the further back in the Bible for this particular task. See, Moses had passed off the scene of action, and Joshua was the man that God had tabbed for this job. And uh, so we're looking there, if you will, uh, there in chapter 1, and look how the Lord just said to Joshua, you be strong. There, look in verse 5 if you'd like to. He said, There shall not a man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage unto this people that thou shalt divide for the inheritance of the land. And I swore to their father to give them, only be strong. And again there in verse uh, 9, he said, be strong. And then there in verse 8, if you would notice there, he talked about the book. And I want to say a few words about the book. One time there was the lady bought a sewing machine and... Uh, the salesman said that machine would do all kind of stitches and so forth. And when she got it home, she couldn't do it, get it to do anything. So she called the store, and they said, go buy the little book. She said, I didn't find one. So they sent her one. Said, we'll call you back in a couple of weeks. When they called her back, she said, oh, it's so easy when you go by the book. Well, thank God we have the book to go by, the Word of God. And we thank God for it. And this is what God said to Joshua. Joshua, the words of this book is not to depart out of your mouth. You are not to turn to the right or to the left, but go straight forward. If you take for a moment and look in the uh, further back in the uh, books there, 
There was a time when Moses sent out 12 spies to spy out the land. In fact, they were almost into the promised land. And when they came back, they brought some fruit. It was so big that they had put it on the two men's shoulder with a stick, and the fruit was hanging down, grapes, I imagine. And when they saw that, boy, they were so amazed. In fact, Caleb and Joshua said to them, Moses, we are well able. But there was ten others who said, we can't. And you know, sometimes that even spills over in our generation. We get the feeling we can't. But I'm telling you, if God is for you, who can be against you? Regardless of the battles of life or the uncomfortable stages we go through at times, God said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? And Jesus said the same thing there to his disciples. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, uh, you trusted in God, you trust in me, and I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I will be with you. And listen, as we look again here at this, there were some things that Joshua, God told Joshua to do. In fact, he promised him there. He said, now you just abide with the Word, and you just look to me. And my friends, regardless of what situation we may find ourselves in, we always ought to look to the Lord. Jonathan and I, especially in these days, have been talking about we're going to pray. We're going to ask God what to do. We're going to ask the Lord to lead us. And Joshua was a successful man even before he come to this point in life. In fact, he and Caleb was the only two at their age was able to go through the wilderness come out on the other side, and enter into the promised land. I want to tell you what, you're a winner when you're trusting in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And regardless of what may be confronting you, it, we do have problems, we do have ups and downs. And when you talk about a family raising children or just meeting all the financial needs, sometimes it's difficult. But I want to tell you what, I have asked God many times to help us, and he's been faithful. As I look back over my shoulder, I have nothing but praise in my heart to say, Thank you, Lord, you've been with us. You've helped us, Lord. You've sent people to help us. You have guided us. You direct their steps, Lord. And I praise him. And this would be a wonderful time, though we're going through a tough time, to give praise to God. Raise your hand and bless the Lord and say, Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us and what you are going to do for us. And just to prove it, as Joshua was concerned about leading them, and there was Jericho that was sitting there, and how they was going to conquer it. And you know what? He was out there walking around one day just looking. Kind of reminds me of myself. Uh, one time, boy, we went through a difficult time here, and I was walking all the way down to the creek. And I said, Lord, you sure got a mess up there. You've got to help us, Lord. We can't do it ourselves. But did you know, my friend, when I got done walking there and come in the next day, that little problem was solved. God blessed, and everything began to flow just wonderful. And Joshua was out there walking around looking at Jericho, and there was someone there. And now listen, uh, he said, Are you captain of the host? He said, Captain of the host of the Lord. And boy, Joshua fell on his face. He knew who it was. Have there been a time in your life when you know God was there and answered your prayer? Have there been a time in your life when you know that it was the Lord was leading? Surely there has been. There has been true in my own life. And Joshua knew, and God showed him and told him what to do. And all along the way, God was with Joshua. And think about the battles that we sometimes go through. I know, it being by me, mommy, when we were young, just got married, and boy, listen, we didn't have this and we didn't have that, but we just trusted in the Lord and was obedient to the Lord and how God led in my life. I was telling Brother Claude just the other day of how that there 
is a young preacher working and pastoring a church and uh, didn't even know about this side of town. But there I was faithful there. And then one day God spoke to my heart and said, you can go over there. I'll go with you. And how, what God has done for us and how God has blessed us and the people that we've seen come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. And I want to tell you, God is not done with us yet. He's still going to bless the church. He's still going to walk with the church. He's still going to meet the needs of the church. And we ought to come sometime with our hands up and say, Praise in the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, God, for what you have done for us. Look again. There was tough time. There was battles. There was wars. There was time when sin got in the camp. And there was time when God had to come on the scene and intervene there. But all of this, my friend, Joshua was faithful to the Lord. And may it be said with us, my friend, that we will be faithful and go by the book. Oh, I love the book. Amen? And I know many people uh, belittle that. And uh, when in my first years of of preaching, uh, my wife had to go to the doctor, and the doctor looked out the window and saw my car there. And I had not even spoken to him. He didn't even know me, but he told my wife, so when you go out there, let your husband out there say, tell him to come in here. So I walked in. He said, you know that black book out there? He said, in your dash of your car? He said, throw it in the Detroit River and go on and make something of yourself. (laughs) When I got in the car, I reached over and got the book and kissed it, laid it back down. (laughs) And brother, listen, he's gone, and I'm still here. And I'm in the center of God's will, doing what God called me to do, preach the Word of God. And even when I had my first funeral, there was a lady, uh, she come from another country. She couldn't speak English. I didn't understand her, but she was the landlord. And a friends of ours were rooming there, had rented the lower apartment or upper apartment. And she said, I like that little fellow. Who is he? I like that little fellow. And she said, if something happens to me that I die, I want him to preach my funeral. And sure enough, she died, and they called me, and so I went. And this was my first funeral. When we got in the ambulance to take the body to the grave, the uh, undertaker said, Son, I don't know who got you into this, but all the way out there, he belittled God and belittled me, and, you know, and I didn't say anything. I was just listening to him. So while they were covering up the grave, I went and sat down in that car, and I said, Lord, if you've ever heard my prayer, come on the scene and help me here. i got to talk to that gentleman. That ain't right for him to talk. Kindly mind you, I hadn't read that, I don't think, at that time about David when he come to his brothers and that giant was out there. Well, this was a giant in my life, but listen, all the way back, I told that man how God saved me, how God called me, what God was going to do in my life. I would look into him, and I looked over and tears coming down. And when he pulled out of the shelter and to park the limousine, he looked over at me, and he's crying. He said, son, if I had the feeling that you got in your heart, he said, I'd go on. He said, just forget everything I've said. You go on and obey the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Talking about battles, God was with us. God helped us, and God's blessed us. And truly, we've been blessed of the Lord. We've all been blessed of God. And it's a time to come and give thanks to him as we think about how that God was with Joshua. But let me go back again. They're talking about the Bible, the Word of God. May we love it. May we look at it, read it, study it, believe it to be the inspired Word of God. And if you want to read some verses that will just absolutely bless your heart go to Matthew chapter 5 6 and 7 the Beatitudes and there oh what a blessing what a blessing it is and uh, we were just talking this morning and uh, talking about some verses there and mommy says uh, boy said so tell me them verses again where they're at and I said read Matthew 5 6 and 7 she said I'll, I'll do that today 
Well, let me tell you what. We need to preach it, teach it, and live it for the glory of God. I thank God for His Word. And so how to be successful in the battles of life. Yes, there'll be some ups and there'll be some downs, but I've never in one time thought about stopping, turning back, looking the other way. God said, don't you turn to the right or to the left. You just go straight forward. Somebody here this morning and out there in the audience uh, at a congregation, you should make up your mind, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to walk with Him and trust Him. And I've never seen a time that God has failed me. And He's never failed this church. He's been good to us. And I have nothing but praise in my heart for all the goodness of the Lord. So you think about it. We need to be strong, be strong, be strong. Paul said that in the book of Ephesians. Put on the whole armor of God, he said. You be strong. I urge every one of you to be strong. Things will change one day, and we'll all be back here in the house of God. And I believe that we'll see new faces come to the house of God. I think this has served as a wake-up call to our country. And this is the enemy that nobody can put their finger on for seeing, that is. But I want to tell you what, it's taken a lot of lives. It's cost, caused a lot of problems and a lot of pain. But you know something? As I said to the family, we have been blessed. God's watched over us, and we thank Him, and we praise Him. Well, may the Lord bless you. We're going to have a word of prayer, and I want Miss Donna to come, and she's just going to sing one stanza. But it's a joy to speak to you today, and I know you're probably wondering about uh, Jonathan, but he and his dear wife, I've got that little baby boy, and that's where they are today. They may have got to come home with it, but his name is Judith Jonathan. He was born May 15th, 8 pounds and 8 ounces. And I want to tell you, this is great grandpa speaking. He is handsome. And some of you, and of course, this is the grandma over here. And she's proud, and we are proud. And Jonathan, we love you and your little family, and happy for you, and look forward to him being back here with us. We may together put out something this week together to trust will be a blessing to you as well. Father, we love you and thank you for the word. And may, Father, that we be mindful that you're the one who will walk with us at the battles of life. And when we're in the valley, you said you never leave us nor forsake us. And you've been faithful, and we bless you and praise you. Now bless our people everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Could we just sing? Jesus, Jesus. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.